I'm now going to show you how to create a PLC master symbol. So we're going to start by creating a new project. Let's just call this PLC standard template and click OK. And I'm going to create the first page. Now a PLC master symbol is made up of PLC signals. So the first thing we have to do is create a PLC signal. So I'm going to draw just a box on the page. And then I'm just going to put a little line so that a connection point is added. That's going to be my PLC signal. It's the starting point. Now, if your PLC is for an analog, it may have several connection points, so you can put more of those on. I'm just going to window around that, right click and choose block. In the list of block definitions, this is C electrical V8R1. I'm going to use PLC signal. Click OK. And you can see the list of information that we can get about this. So it starts with a product. It calls it PLC1. You've then got a connection point. I'm going to put the address as being number one. And I'm going to put some other text for description and comment just so I can see where that text appears. So that's basically what a PLC signal is made up of. Those are the default bits of text. If I go to edit text, click on the first piece at the bottom, there's a little dot there. I can see that that in the attributes is sheet cell reference. And above that, I've got PLC comment, description, PLC address, and that's the product of the identification. And this piece of text here is the connection point. So that's the essential, the minimum information that we need with a PLC symbol. So next thing, I'm going to format it a bit. So I'm going to go to explode. I'm going to window around those bits of text there. Go to edit. I'm not going to change anything. It's important not to change the attribute. I'm going to put it all left justified. I'm going to change my grid a little bit down to 0.5. And I'm going to start by putting, um, let's see, let's put the description on the bottom there. Number one, which is the address on the top. And I'm then going to move across that reference to say whereabouts this is to the right hand side. Move it across a little bit. And I'm then going to move the connection point. Um, let's just move that ID up. That's going to disappear. And the connection point is there. I'm just going to move that up. Now it's connected to the connection point. So I'm going to use F6 to select that connection point. Right click and choose move. And just move that up slightly there. And I'm going to just draw a box just around that end bit. Just put it back to a five millimeter grid so everything joins up. I'll put a box around there and I'll put a line along there. So the formatting is completely up to you. You can make it look however you like really. But this is how I'm going to do this one. Right. So that's my first one. What I'm going to do, let's just move that out of the way. I'm not going to use that comment for now. And you can hide whatever you like on the main symbol. So window around it, block it again as a PLC signal. So we don't need to see the comment and we don't need to see the ID. Now the important thing here is that we have the address and the connection point as different for each signal when we're saving the symbol. So that's a key bit of information. Now, what I'm going to do next is hold down the, the uh, zero on the keyboard. And as I drag down, I'm going to let go. And you can see that's got a copy command. I've let go of the zero. Now I'm going to drop the symbol. And that now says, how many do you want? It's an array copy. I want seven. Click OK. And now for each of these, I'm going to put the next address. So for the next one, I'm going to go three down. I'm using the down arrows and then pressing enter to accept that. So four then five and then six seven and the last one eight so that's all my inputs for an eight input or output card I haven't specified if it's an input or output each one with a single connection point so it's very important they all have a separate connection point and address next thing I'm going to actually put a box around those and I'm going to put a piece of text at the top, change my grid a little bit. So draw text. And I'm going to put this as being the identification. I'm going to call it PLC so that the software numbers it PLC 1, 2, 3, and so on. I need to tell it what attribute it's going to be. It's going to be component and product as left justified. So I'm just going to place that there. Next thing, I'm going to put this as being eight input. PLC, and I'm going to put that as being the description. Double click on the attribute to set it. 
And then finally, I'm going to go down to the bottom, back on a 5mm grid, and I'm going to put some lines around the edge of this box to say these are power connections, maybe, or network connections. But these are basically going to be the outer symbols. So this is a PLC main symbol. I'm going to window round everything, right click and block. And now I have two options, either a block or group to keep these together, or, and this is the important one, PLC main. When you click OK, it gives it an identification and you can click OK. So this is now one object saved as a PLC main symbol. If I double click, I can see all the information, connection zero for each signal. You can see that one highlighted. And as I scroll down, I've then got the addresses numbered down there. So if I was to place in another symbol, let's create a new page. I go down to my PLC, this is a standard library, digital inputs, I'm going to go scroll down for the inputs and outputs, the signals, and signal one up. I'm going to zoom in, place that down, and first thing I would need to link it to the actual PLC card, clicking DB. Second thing I need to click on DB for connection point and choose one of the addresses. It's really important that both the address and the connection point match with one on the main, the PLC master symbol. And you can see that that now references. Um, I could go back and actually say that this is motor running. Maybe it's sensing something that's going into there. Um, if we go back to the previous page, we can see that that description is now on there. And the address references to where that is, is in there. So that information is working correctly. We can also link this with the standard and advanced version with automatic addressing. We can go down to properties on the circuit diagram into the main section here for PLC numbering we could set this to say user defined and we could say right we're going to have two bytes for the first bit two uh, digits sorry for the bit and we could say have a, a full stop as the separator if we want click OK so it's now user defined addressing if I double click on the master go into addressing and I could say this is perhaps I colon zero zero dot zero zero Press enter and you can see that that addressing is now entered for all of those and it's the same information that I would see on this next page as well. So the PLC main symbol is made up of PLC signals. You window around the whole lot and then block it as a PLC main. Once you've done that you can then go into your folder for your my symbols or you can create a new one so you could right click new symbol database. Create a new folder there. And then you can drag that from wherever you want. That's going to become the base point. Drop it in there and call this 8 input PLC. And then you can place those in. Now remember it's going to save any of the settings that you had on there. So should really have actually changed some of that. You can see it's numbering correctly. I could have either left that blank or I could put a different value in there now and I can see that's automatically numbering.